Hey guys, you know the number one question I get from beginning resin printers? Hey Garrett, the Rook and the Test Cube printed great, but I can't print anything else. Help! Today I'm going to talk about why resin prints fail, and I'm going to teach you a quick and easy way to fix it. Are you ready to get this started? Let's do this. Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Do you know the most important parameter in 3D resin printing is the exposure time of a single layer? That's it. That's the secret. Okay guys, have a great day. We'll see you again next time on 3D... Uh, no, that's not it. No, I'm just kidding. Do you know incorrect exposure time is one of the major reasons why resin prints fail? Underexposure is a biggie, and that's a, a lot of times folks that have failures with 3D prints are underexposures. That's the one where you get the dreaded, you're waiting all night, and then you go in and you check on your resin print, and all you see are these supports hanging down from the build plate. And you think, oh my gosh, what happened? And the model is, boop, it's inside of the vat, and all you have are these stinking supports hanging from the build plate. That's a symptom of underexposure. If you see blobs of resin on the bottom of the vat, that could be from a bill plate that's not properly leveled, or it could be from underexposure. So underexposure is a bad deal. So how do you fix it? I mean, if you go out to the manufacturer's website, like Sariatech, they tell you, well, the normal exposure of Sariatech Gray is eight seconds per normal layer on an Elegoo Mars. And it may be a little bit different on the Frozen Sonic Mini over here. So, yeah, okay, you can use those numbers or possibly go out to a Facebook group and pull those numbers from a Google Docs group and say, well, that's, that's all fine and good. Well, the problem with that is, yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, they're great for uh, baseline numbers, but the room that I'm in here is set at 72 degrees with very low humidity. Your printer may be in a garage somewhere. You may have a higher humidity. You may like your room at 80 degrees. The age of your resin may be a year old. The your Elegoo Mars that you have, or your Sonic Mini, you've been printing it, printing for a hundred hours. So your LCD is going to be a different power than it was when you first bought it. So there's all of these factors in there. So how again? How do you tune your resin to find that sweet spot? To find out that perfect time for the normal layer to get the perfect print. So let's take a look at this longer brand resin today. This is a bottle that I picked up. I've never used this resin before. It is uh, longer, standard rapid photopolymer resin, and it's in the light brown color. Again, how would you, uh, you know, if, if you bought a brand new bottle of resin, whether this was longer or whether it was the Sriatec, I mean, how would you, how would you pick the normal exposure time? Again, you'd probably head out to the manufacturer's website or go to one of the Facebook groups and pull the numbers down. Well, there's an easier way to figure this out. So I use a validation matrix, and I use a extremely simple one that takes very little time to print, uses very little resin, and I'm gonna show you how we do it right here. Let's go to the interwebs. Okay, I'm going to be posting the link to this particular STL in the description below. So what this is, is the resin XP2 validation matrix. And as you can see here, let me just kind of pan this down. This would make a lot easier to see. What you're looking at is these two points here, okay? When this validation matrix is properly exposed, these two points, this negative space and the positive space of this infinity symbol will meet in a point right here. An underexposed print will show a gap between these two points. An overexposed print, of course, the resin will grow, will show a, more or less a clog. It'll look, it'll look like these points are kind of blobbed together. The same goes for these um, rectangles down here. If you see one of the rectangles, if this rectangle here looks like it fits perfectly into this negative space, that means that your print is properly exposed. 
if it's underexposed, this block will be slightly smaller, which then again, an, an item that's underexposed will be smaller, it would shrink. Same way with overexposed, if this is a little bit larger, it looks like it, it looks like it won't fit in between here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to go from one extreme to the next, because I really want you guys to see what overexposure is and underexposure is so we can try to find the sweet spot. So what I'm gonna do with this first print, I am going to overexpose it on purpose with the Frozen Sonic Mini. So what you do is you go into settings and for the Frozen Sonic Mini, I go into the print tab. I change this exposure time, which is for the normal exposure. I'm going to change it to 5.5 seconds. And what you do is go ahead and slice this. As you can see, it takes 1.7 mils of resin. It takes a little over six minutes to print. So at this point, you'll want to save it to your memory stick, place it in your resin printer. It'll print out less than 10 minutes, remove it, clean it, cure it as normal, and then look at your results. I like to take a um, uh, black magic marker or uh, a sharpie and write what the seconds are in here that that kind of helps you remember so let's take a look at what 5.5 seconds looks like so as you can see here on the 5.5 second print is the this look take a take a, a take a look at this middle here do you see how the two points between the infinity symbol in the middle is looks kind of squashed together uh, that's a telltale sign of overexposure also look down here at these rectangles. Do you see how these rectangles do not fit in the negative space? The positive rectangles do not fit in the negative space, so this is a clear sign of overexposure. So let's go back, and I'm going to do this a couple times because I know you're going to, you're going to get bored watching me do this in, um, in Cheetu Box, but to do, we're going to do a 1.5 second exposure. Remember, we're going to do the I'm going to, we're going to go to the opposite end of the spectrum. So I'm going to go in here to settings. I'm going to change this to 1.5 seconds. Change this. Slice it again. Again, same amount of resin. A little over five minutes to print. Printer. Print the print. Go over here. Save it to your USB stick. Print it out. Wash it. Cure it. And observe it. Okay. Let's look at the one and, a half sec one and a half seconds. Look at the gap between these two points in the middle of this infinity symbol. You see the, the large gap between the two? And also look at the text. The text is almost all gone. Some of the little cylinders over here are, uh, are missing. Uh, notice also some of the, the rectangles below they would not fit like a puzzle piece. They are way too small. Again, this is a symptom of something being way underexposed because you remember your items will shrink. Hence the reason why a lot of your supports will fail if your print is underexposed. So what we're going to do now is I'm not going to go back to Cheat 2 Box. I'm going to we're going to I'm going to show you uh, some of the other chips that I printed. So what I did is I printed a, a series of chips and you can see one extreme was the five and a half seconds to the one and a half seconds. So I'm going to take a happy medium here and I am going to go to a two and a half second. You'll notice a two and a half second is pretty darn close. There's still, you can still see a little bit of underexposure uh, along this infinity symbol which means that, okay, it's still a little underexposed. So what I'll do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to bump it up another maybe one second. So I went in, bump it up another second to three and a half seconds. And as you can see, it looks a heck of a lot better. So the point is almost exactly there. It looks like down below, you know, a lot of the text is still visible. A lot of the uh, a lot of the little cylinders are there. Uh, it it fits pretty darn close. So you know, it in my estimation, this is going to be a print that will print really well at around three to three and a half seconds without you know any any issues whatsoever. And that's that's the one I would look for. You could do either a three or a three and a half second. You know, half second each. But this helps you find the sweet spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this three and a half second time. 
and I am going to go over here and print this really creepy character from Printed Obsession, and we're going to go take a look at it right now. Okay, so check this out. There is no way I could have printed this with incorrect exposure, especially with these super thin supports going all the way to the fingertips. This is just simply unbelievable. Again, this is another perfect example of a white from Loot Studios. Look at the supports along the, the blade. Super thin supports along the blade, uh, along around the breastplate. It's just unbelievable what properly tuned supports can get you. Again, folks, don't forget to visit my friend Alvaro Rivero and his team over at LootStudios.com. He has an awesome collection this month. This month is called White Apocalypse. That's right, White Apocalypse is the July bundle. For only 15 bucks a month, you will get all of the White Apocalypse hero characters as well as all of these awesome monsters. There's that evil-looking white boss that we looked at earlier today and we supported and you'll get all of these awesome objects to go along with this particular set for July. Make sure to check them out at lootstudios.com. Hey guys, once again, thanks for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope you learned a little something today too. I'm sure a lot of you guys are wondering, who won that Elegoo Mars 3D resin printer? I just did the drawing. So congratulations goes out to Tyler Vaught from Columbia, Missouri. He's the big winner of the Elegoo Mars 3D resin printer. Make sure you're a subscriber because I'm going to be giving away lots of goodies in the next month or so. And if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer each and every one of your questions. Again, have a great day. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time on 3D Print Farm. Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Do you know the most important parameter in 3D resin printing is the... Uh, exposure time. Exposure time. Hey guys, welcome back to 3D Print Farm. Did you know the most important parameter in 3D resin printing is the exposure time of a... Hey. Also, you'll see some prints that are underexposed. It may not even stick to the build plate at all. Stupid dogs. <laughs>